starting this broadcast with news from Canada. A day after Canada's capital, Ottawa declared a state of emergency. Police authorities have now seized thousands of litres of fuel and have removed the oil tankers as part of a crackdown to end an 11-day-old protest against COVID-19 mandates. The Freedom Convoy, consisting of truckers mainly, started as a movement against a Canadian vaccine requirement for cross-border drivers. But it has now turned into a rallying point against the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government. It has disrupted life in downtown Ottawa for 11 days now. Incessant honking has hampered the normally quiet life of residents in the area. And in the latest, a Canadian court has granted an injunction to stop people from honking horns in Ottawa's city centre. The application of the injunction was part of a class action lawsuit that was launched on behalf of the residents who described the noise from late honking as unbearable and in a bid to quell the demonstrations, Ottawa Police Chief Peter slowly said that he'd made a number of arrests and were able to shut down the money that was being supplied to the protesters and further stopped fuel supply to vehicles who were involved in the 10-day protest against the COVID restrictions. We're going after the fuel. We're going after any vehicle conveyance, including horseback, people carrying jerry cans. We are arresting and seizing and we are interdicting fuel going into the demonstrations. The Ottawa police chief touted their efforts, saying that the forces have eliminated the GoFundMe, a fundraising platform, which clearly meant that 10 million, show the $10 million are no longer accessible to the demonstrators anymore. What particularly has occurred of a significant nature? We went after the funding. Our efforts combined with the city's efforts eliminated the GoFundMe. Ten million dollars are no longer accessible to the demonstrators. There are other funding avenues that we continue to aggressively go after through intelligence, information, coordination with financial institutions, and all three levels of government. We will be relentless in pursuing the funding that has enabled this demonstration to continue to this point. Currently, over 80% of Canada's eligible population is fully vaccinated. A recent poll also showed that a majority of Canadians favoured imposing more restrictions on the unvaccinated. The Ipsos poll shows that 67% want the government to impose further measures. Nearly 49% blame the unvaccinated for prolonging the pandemic. And we were earlier joined by David Reevely, a reporter from The Logic from Ottawa. During our conversation, we really talked about the protest, Trudeau's reaction and the composition of protesters, among other things. Let's listen in. Yes, and that actually began last night uh, after dark. It's morning here. And this was uh, around nine o'clock last night. Police began moving in on a sort of logistics camp that had been set up just outside downtown in a parking lot, seized uh, large tanks of fuel that the uh, protesters had assembled uh, and charged at least a couple of people uh, with mischief and other things there. And there have been uh, a different camp that had been set up in a park much closer to the downtown core, close to Parliament, uh, that was also cleared out last night. And the police are warning that they will be stopping the influx of fuel uh, that is keeping uh, engines running in the downtown core. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.